Call me irresponsible. Hey guys, how you doing? Call me uh, so now that we wrapped up the stabilizing aspect of you know what I'm doing, and if you guys want to do it, I thought what I do is show you a little bit about what ends up happening after you're stabilizing. It's not all glitz and glamour, you know, stabilizing stuff. Um, there are, of course, the costs, like I've, I've touched on earlier about toaster oven, um, and if you want to make yourself a little uh, uh, drying uh, compartment, like an old metal uh, storage compartment or a gun safe or something like that, insulate some type of wood box that you can make that you can uh, take your wood and keep it in that and plug something in to keep it warm and dry. But you got your toaster oven, uh, you've got your stabilizing unit, your vacuum chamber, and uh, then you've got your pump, then you have some gauges because you're going to probably want to upgrade your gauges a little bit, and then if you want to do some pressurizing, you need the pressure pot, and you'll definitely have to up update those gauges if it comes with some. They're pretty cheap gauges. You want to get yourself some really nice gauges as well as a pressure release valve that you can change the spring and uh, uh, change the pressures that you put in there. So you're looking at those costs and everything, but to run a pump, whether it's mine, like the JB pump I have, or maybe some of the uh, the cheaper ones out there for, they, like I said, they're like 50, 60 bucks. You buy them on Amazon and Harbor Freight, stuff like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it myself. I'm not selling any of it, but what I'm telling you, what I decided to spend my money on in certain parts, I think those, those aspects were positive. Um, I'm learning that I could have spent more money on other things, nicer things, but where you don't want to scrimp is that pump. That's a big purchase. That's the biggest purchase out of all those items put together. That's why you want to maintain these things. So even if you don't opt to get a JB pump, that eliminator or whatever it is, uh, you don't opt to get theirs, the, the industrial or commercial version, you're still going to want to make sure that you take your pump apart after every time you're using it, that uh, you, you clean it all out because what it's doing is it's it's vacuuming, right? It's sucking the oxygen out of that, that chamber. And by sucking the oxygen out of it, the air, it's also sucking up moisture. Don't you know that what? Battery went out of me. Uh, so uh, what I was saying is, uh, please join Patreon. <laughs> Buy a knife, something. i got to get a new camera. Uh, so what I was trying to get at is the uh, moisture. So I think that's where this left off is uh, the pump's drawing moisture out of that chamber. So... You have your chamber, you have your stabilizing resin, and there's moisture that is inevitably going to get in uh, through the line and into the stable, into the uh, pr um, vacuum pump. I did so well the first take. Uh, so anyhow, um, yeah. So what you're going to want to do is you want to take apart your pump after you're all done. You take your par pump apart. You want to clean it all, wipe it clean, put new oil in it, run it through, and then you can go ahead and shelf it. Uh, the reason why I know this is because when I first bought my pump a couple years ago, I did some batches of stabilizing, and then I put it off to the side knowing that, I, yeah, I should change the oil or something, but I didn't really grasp how important that was. Sometimes we buy tools, we like to use them and abuse them, and we put them to the side and, and you know, use and abuse a tool, maybe, but this one, you don't want to do that. So what, you ended up have, what I ended up having is, is I had a bunch of corrosion on the inside of it. And I was able to clean it all out and get it all sorted out. But it took me a lot of time because I had to take it apart, clean everything, put oil in it, run a system, run it for a few minutes, drain it, take it apart, clean it again, put it back together, put oil in it. You get the, pit, you get the point. So now that I did that, I've learned my lesson. So every time you're done using this pump, you have to clean it out. You have to take, care, you have to take it apart and clean it. I can't speak for the cheaper pumps, although I wouldn't think that the $300 or $350 pump, whatever they are now, again, I bought this two years ago, I could put a link down below on Amazon, that's where I got it on Amazon, so um, I can't think that this pump would need any more maintenance than the cheaper $50, $60 ones that you get on Amazon or Harbor Freight, I would think you'd have to probably do the same thing. You gotta buy a pump oil and you gotta maintain these things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get it. I'll show you what I do, uh, what I use, the oils and stuff like that, what it takes to, to take this apart and clean it. So at least this way now we can wrap up this whole stabilizing thing with pretty much the maintaining of, of the stuff that you have. The, the vessel and the pressure pot, there's no reason to show you anything because all it is is just a container. You just wipe it clean. Um, my little stabilizing chamber, the vacuum chamber I mean, um, that vacuum chamber, I take it up to the house, I wash it with a little dish soap, hot water dish soap, 
wipe it out clean, that's fine. You don't have to do that. You can just wipe it down and wipe it clean and that's good. But um, I take it up to the house and I wash it all out when I'm done. And because of the fact it's occupied right now, um, I've got the last of my wood sitting and everything. I thought maybe I just let it soak and I'll show you about the pump. So let's get the pump, we'll get everything together and uh, we'll show you what this is like. Okay, hopefully this will be a good view for everybody. Um, one of the few things you're going to need is, I actually use one of my old cactus uh, juice containers, and that's just to drain the oil into and store it. It's, um, it's pretty watery, uh, even before you go and use it, but uh, it's not that bad. It's open thing. This is uh, the actual oil for this particular pump. Again, I got it from Amazon, uh, because this is where I bought the pump from. They show this is the oil. Made in America, just like the pump, uh, labeled by JB um, for their thing. It's called Black Gold, one gallon pump oil. Um, you can look it up and uh, see what you need, um, you know, for uh, the, the viscos viscosity and stuff like that. So you go that route there. And then need a little funnel because this is where your oil goes back into. So on this pump, and I can't speak of the others, but I would assume they're all going to be about the same as there's going to be a drain at the bottom of everything and right here is where the uh, drain plug is. So then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll close that valve up in a second and then we'll flip the pump around because we have to remove this uh, housing back here. We have to remove the housing and then whatever oil left in that will pour out. Okay I went ahead and I grabbed the garbage can and uh, just set it in here so if I was those dripping it would fall inside the paper towels and stuff that I have in there. But So you want to break these There we have it. So, reusable gasket. So, make sure you don't do anything with that. You don't want to regret. So, just take your gasket. It's just a little rubber gasket here. Like I said, it's reusable. You'll just want to wipe it off right when you're ready to put everything back together again. So, as you see here, like this little plate here, this is this is some of the stuff that was left over from when I I kind of had the neglected it a little bit the first time around. Uh, this little pitting that you see in here. So this is all these little stains and stuff are from when I first did it. As well as you'll see all of this here. This is all from previous use. That's when I left it go. But what I will show you, oh here let's see real quick here. See you see the inside of this, all this gunk that's in there. You see that? See all that gunk that's right there. That you don't want in there. You want to get that out. All that contaminant and along right here too, you see all this, I'll write my finger across it, see? If it'll focus. Yeah, you want to get all this up. This is all that gunk. You want to clean that all. That's what hurts your pump. Right in there, I don't know if you guys will see it. Right in this little spot right here, you can see right there, there you go. See how some of that's starting to build up again. See, all this gunk. This is all from when the pump was running. See, look at all that. See? I probably should have went after the second one and cleaned rather than wait till this the third one was done. Uh, you see all that? You want to clean this all off. You want to clean all this off, but you'll see a lot of the staining from the previous neglect that I had subjected it to that I regret at this point. And then you can take these off too and you wipe all these clean and you can you get underneath there. There's actually two pieces of metal, you'll see them there. A rag wool here, you'd see this, um, it's got a little, I don't know if the camera will zoom in on that or you see a little gunk on it. And I'm going to make sure to kind of clean it off a little bit. I did a better job. I uh, got that all cleaned off there. So, Okay, so we got this all pretty much cleaned up here now. Um, what you don't do is you don't take this apart. You don't take these bolts off or anything else. There's the entire, uh, all the timing is inside this for the motor, for the vacuum. Um, if this needed any more maintenance, you got to send it out. You got to send it back to uh, JB Pumps to get the rest of it all cleaned up and taken care of. And this gasket's reusable, so there's no concerns about that. Just treat it nice. You don't want to just wipe this down, clean up anything that might be on any contaminants or anything. See. Okay, we're all tight. What I did is I made sure that I staggered as I tighten these. I put all these bolts in by hand just to snug them to the plate. And then I went ahead and I tightened the ball down and I staggered. Now we need oil. 
So, and you're going to fill this till you see the uh, level line on the inside of this window here that they give you. We got that filled. We peaked right at our oil level right there. What we're going to do next is I plug it in, I run it just for a couple of seconds, circulate it, shut it off, and then we're good to go. So that's it, guys. We got it, uh, we got it done. We got it wrapped up. It's, uh, I did drain a little bit out, so got the oil level at a proper spot. Turned it back on, ran it for a couple of seconds. Works out great. That's it. That's the glamorous part of all the stabilizing. Uh, so hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully maybe... Uh, uh, you guys are thinking about it and you're and you're on the fence about doing this yourself and you realize hey it's a lot of work I don't want to deal with that it's not worth it then no biggie um, there's plenty of people out there that sell it um, I don't normally sell my my blocks of scales and such um, I usually do it my, for myself for my own consumption um, I've given a couple pieces away or sold one or two once in a while here and there but I don't try to uh, make too much of a habit of it because I, get, I, I do all this and and uh, I just like to keep it for myself because I like wood so much as you can tell but uh, oh here uh, I remember when we took this apart we started this process and we drew we released the vacuum from that chamber there you go that's already getting absorbed that much has already been absorbed since uh, we've done this in the last 20 minutes or so and the block of woods are starting to, to sink so, not all of them are sunk yet, but uh, they're starting to. They're slowly absorbed the rest of this resin. They'll settle in there, and uh, then we'll throw them in that pressure pot. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to do another vacuum, of course. I have uh, this other batch here to do. I still have a batch here to do, as well as probably a couple of others. But uh, it was a good thing that I went ahead and cleaned that, so... Um, they say to clean it after use. Well, I, I was still using it technically, but it's a learning lesson that probably after one of these or even two of these, you should take it apart and clean it, drain the oil, do it again. It, it doesn't take long. It takes 20 minutes maybe, and that was fussing around with the camera, making a couple of spills and, and things, but, uh, you know, it doesn't take very long, guys. So, uh, yeah, I'll put links, descriptions, you know, like some of the stuff I have here. I'll put it down below. Um, turn text woodworking where you can get these if I haven't put it in the other videos I'll put it down below here as well as the pump and uh, if they still have the information about the, the pressure pot and stuff like that I'll put it in there but anyhow guys thanks for stopping over appreciate it hopefully this helps till the next video we'll catch you later bye